Hello everyone. I welcome you all to my next video lecture. In this lecture, I will discuss the coronavirus pandemic that has engulfed the entire globe in just three months since it was first brought to the attention of the World Health Organization on New Year's Eve. There are three primary reasons why the world is so concerned about this new virus to no one to our knowledge has natural immunity. So first is rapid spread of the virus. In just three months, it has spread to over 200 countries. The second is that it poses significant morbidity and mortality what threatens to overwhelm the global health care system. So since the first report of this virus in Wuhan, China, as of April 16, there were over 2.2 billion cases and 1.5 million deaths worldwide which is a mortality rate of 4.5%, which is higher than that of flu virus. And even now, USA leads the world as the hotspot for COVID-19. The third reason is a huge reservoir of carriers of this particular disease. It is estimated that the, there may be tenfold more asymptomatic carriers without symptoms of the disease, which means that could be over 7.5 billion carriers worldwide. So, in summary, this is a disease that is spreading very rapidly across the globe with the number of cases doubling every three to four days and it has brought fear and unpredictability across the globe requiring the implementation of social distancing and lockdown policy, stressing our medical capabilities to the extreme and causing severe economic fallout that is still unfolding. How long all of this will last is completely unknown, is anybody's guess. The outbreak of SARS-CoV-2 began in Wuhan, China in December 2019. COVID-19, the disease associated with SARS-CoV-2 infection, rapidly spread to produce a global pandemic. In this lecture, I am going to share some of the basic biology of coronavirus and how that relates to COVID-19 disease. So I am going to tell you about three different aspects of COVID-19 in this lecture. First of which is just defining how COVID-19 disease relates to this virus called SARS-CoV-2. Next, I am going to tell you how we test for the presence of the SARS-CoV-2 infection. And then I am going to share with you what we have learned about SARS-CoV-2 genome. As we know it's an RNA genome and how we are able to look at changes in the sequence in this genome and that's enabling us to track the spread of this virus around the globe. And it's really part of an amazing open science effort with sort of unprecedented level of information acquisition and information sharing among researchers. So, coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause a wide range of illness from common cold to severe diseases. A novel coronavirus, NCOV-19, is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans. On December 31, 2019, the WHO China office was informed of pneumonia cases of unknown cause in Wuhan city of Hubei province of China. A novel coronavirus, NCOV-2, was isolated and identified as a causative virus of COVID-19 by Chinese authorities on 7 January 2020. COVID-19 is a disease caused by coronavirus called SARS-CoV-2. The incubation period for this virus is currently estimated to range from 1 to 12.5 days with a median of 5 to 6 days. The mode of transmission for this virus is by droplets spread by the affected individuals, contact with patient respiratory secretions, contaminated surfaces and equipment. This virus can be transmitted from animals and from human to human. Currently, there are no available treatment or vaccination but only supportive measures. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of COVID-19? Illness seems to start with a fever followed by a dry cough and then after a week leads to shortness of breath and some patients needing hospital treatment. 
This slide shows the diagrammatic representation of different signs and symptoms of COVID-19. According to the World Health Organization, the case definition which is to be investigated and tested for COVID-19 falls into two groups. Category A, history of fever, cough and requiring admission to hospital with no other etiology that fully explains the clinical presentation and history of travel or residence in or to China in the 14 days prior to symptom onset or patient with any acute respiratory illness and at least one of the following during the 14 days prior to symptom onset. Contact with a confirmed or suspected case of COVID-19 infection or worked in or attended a healthcare facility where patients with confirmed or probable COVID-19 acute respiratory disease patients were being treated. So, first of all, I just want to clarify how COVID-19 relates to SARS-CoV-2. So, COVID-19 is the disease that's part of this pandemic and it's caused by a virus that's recently been named SARS-CoV-2. And there is a connection here you can think of in terms of the disease of AIDS being caused by the virus HIV. Similarly, as I have mentioned in previous lecture back in 2002 and 2003, there was this severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, the disease that was caused by a virus that's called SARS-CoV, now called as COV-1. And since the virus of this current pandemic is related in sequence, it's ha it has been named SARS-CoV-2. And so SARS-CoV-1 and 2 are part of this group of viruses called coronaviruses which are named because of the appearance of the viral particle as you saw in the electron micrograph in last lecture. So as many of you know, viruses are completely dependent on host for replication. So unlike many disease causing agents like most bacterial pathogens or fungal pathogens that are able to replicate on their own, viruses absolutely need a host present and it's for this reason that the social distancing measures that we have been taking about and been implemented can be so effective. Because while the virus can survive in the cases of SARS-CoV-2 maybe 2 to 3 days outside a host, it cannot make more of itself without getting inside of a host cell. So that process of getting inside of a host cell and making more of itself is diagrammed here. With this rectangle representing the host, for example, a cell in human lung, where outside the cell of virus such as such as a hexagon here, if it is able to find a proper receptor on the surface of the cell combined to that receptor and can be taken up into the cell. The virus will then release its genome to enable gene expression to happen. Replication of this genome and late expression to enable the formation of new viral particles. And here we have got one virus coming in and then three new viruses being made that are released to go and infect new host. And in fact, you can have a much larger replication number than this. For example, some viruses can have tens to thousands of new viral particles made from a cell. And also, I would like to mention the genome for the coronavirus is actually different from the genome of most life. So most life, like bacteria and human, the blueprint to make more of oneself, the genome, is the molecule called DNA. And some viruses do use DNA. So this generalized life cycle here is showing sort of a DNA being made into RNA, which is made into proteins. But many viruses use RNA for their genome. And in particular, coronavirus are single-stranded RNA viruses that are positive sense 
which means they can rapidly hijack the host protein synthesis machinery to start making protein and in this way really rapidly hijack and take over a host cell. So knowing that the coronavirus has RNA in its genome help us understand how the test for the presence of coronavirus is done. So you may have heard about the need for more testing. We have had an extreme shortage of tests and there were some problems with the original tests that were available and it's really critical that we get more of these tests and I just want to explain how these tests work. The most common of which is the RT-PCR test which stands for reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction also sometimes called a real-time test. So the way this test works is that a sample from a patient is isolated and then it's reverse transcribed into DNA. This DNA is amplified with the help of polymerase chain reaction to enable detection of one segment of the viral RNA genome. So this RNA detection enables us to determine who is currently infected with the virus. This kind of RT-PCR test however will miss infection that have already been cleared. And so a related test will be able to detect those infections that occurred in the past. And this kind of test is a serology test that measures antibodies that were generated against the presence of that virus. And the antibodies that are generated against the virus can be detected if somebody is currently infected and is monitoring an immune response or somebody who was infected in the past and has cleared the virus but still has those antibodies because they can last for years and even decades. And so with the combination of these two tests where the RT-PCR test is able to detect the presence of viral RNA in current infection together with the serology test that measures the immune response, we can detect who has the infection but hasn't yet mounted for some reason an antibody response maybe because the infection is still so early people who have both the infection and have mounted an immune response and people who no longer have the infection but had it in the past and mounted an immune response and potentially those antibodies cleared the infection so this rt-pcr test is detecting rna for just one gene in the viral genome but the virus has a number of different genes that are made into protein that are part of an entire genome. So, very recently, a third method for detection of SARS-CoV-2 has been published in Nature Biotechnology. Development of a rapid, less than 40-minute, easy-to-implement and accurate CRISPR-Cas12-based lateral flow assay for detection of SARS-CoV-2 from respiratory swab RNA extract. The method was validated using contrived reference samples and clinical samples from patients in the United States, including 36 patient, patients with COVID-19 infection and 42 patients with oral viral respiratory infection. The CRISPR-based DETECTR assay provides a visual and faster alternative to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention. SARS-CoV-2 real-time PCR assay with 95% positive predictive agreement and 100% negative predictive agreement. DETECTR stands for detection of SARS-CoV-2 from extracted patient sample RNA called SARS-CoV-2 DNA endonuclease targeted CRISPR trans reporter. This assay performs simultaneous reverse transcription and isothermal amplification using loop mediated amplification that is RTLAMP for RNA extracted from nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swab in universal transport medium followed by Cas12 detection of predefined coronavirus sequence after which cleavage of a reporter molecule confirms detection of the virus. Primer were designed targeting the E or enveloped gene and N nucleoprotein gene of SARS-CoV-2. The primers amplify regions that overlap WHO assay 
E gene region and US CDC assay N2 region in N gene, but were modified to meet design requirement for LAMP. Next, Cas12 gRNA were designed. Next, Cas12 gRNAs were designed to detect three SARS-like coronaviruses, bat SARS-like coronaviruses, and SARS-CoV in the N region. Diagram A shows a genome map showing primers, probes, and gRNAs. Visualization of primers and probes on the SARS-CoV2 genome. RT lamp primers are indicated by black rectangles. The binding position of the F1C and B1C, half of the forward inner primers, gray in color, is represented by striped rectangle with dashed borders. Figure B shows minimum equipment needed to run the protocol. Along with biosafety level 2 requirements, it includes a Pendorf tube with reagents, heat blocks or water bath with a temperature of 37 degree and 62 degree Celsius, Nuclease free water, pipettes and tips, and lateral flow strips. Diagram C shows a schematic of SARS-CoV-2 DET CTR workflow. Conventional RNA extracted and used as input to DET CTR lamp pre-amplification and Cas12 based detection for E gene, N gene, and RNAs P which is visualized by a fluorescent reader or lateral flow strip. However, this study has been recently published in March 2020 in Nature Biotechnology. As we all know, the technology of sequencing has gotten so much better. We are rapidly and cheaply acquiring genome information we are able to sequence the entire genome of this virus from many many different samples and it's really been an amazing kind of unprecedented rate at which we are acquiring the information sharing the information and analyzing the information and a lot of this information so it's basically getting samples from patients around the globe that are sending information to a website called this ad that, that is run by the German government, originally organized to acquire influenza information, now being adopted for coronavirus, that information is rapidly reported to a website called nexttrain.org. That has have re really wonderful visualization tools so we can look at how the sequence of the genome is changing. And this, as I mentioned earlier, that is increasingly there are more and more genome information available every time you look at the website. So this morning there were more than 3000 viral genomes from 2000 different infected patients that were analyzed and compared. And the way they are compared is in sort of the family tree shown here. With on the x axis is the time and the color are re representing where the virus has been isolated from. For example, purple color represents isolated from China, red color represents isolated from America. And then the branch links of these three are telling us how closely related these different viruses are. So you can see that viruses from China are more, very closely related to some of the viruses that were isolated from the people in the America. From this information, we can learn that somebody in China transmitted the virus to somebody in America. And not only are we now able to track how the virus has spread by this kind of fingerprint of the mutations and the changes in the viral genome, but we also, because of what we know from the biology of the virus, can learn about how the biology of the virus is changing, how it may be altering the way it interacts with the host cells, and also potentially different ways that we could treat it. These are the different references that I used for making this presentation.
थैंक यू एवरी वन एंड इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो प्लीज लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल थैंक यू